Hello, this is the To Health With That, naturally healthy in no time podcast for big health topics taken in small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor, Amy Nuzo. This is season one, all about the MTHFR mutation. Today, we're going to talk about health problems linked to the MTHFR mutation. Mutation sounds so serious and certain. So why are we even talking about that? First off, I use the term mutation or mutant mostly because I like those words. Mutant sounds so very X-Men and God knows I'm a sci-fi geek. Technically, the correct term is polymorphism, which is far less dramatic and sadly doesn't imply eyeball laser beams. Polymorphisms are simply small differences, one-letter substitutions in a gene. SNP, single nucleotide polymorphisms, which is pronounced SNPs, are part of the wonderful and astounding variability of human genetics. It is the difference between Tom is tall and Tom is fall. One letter. According to the National Institute of Health, SNPs occur in our DNA almost once per 1,000 nucleotides. Since we have over 3 billion nucleotides, or base pairs, in the human genome, this means the average person has somewhere in the neighborhood of 4 to 5 million SNPs. That's a lot of quote-unquote mutations. The vast majority of SNPs don't have any impact at all, but as we discussed last week, some do. I am, of course, referring to the magic chair that is the MTHFR enzyme. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about here, just check out last week's episode. Health problems are linked to some MTHFR SNPs because they change the magic chair. I'm, of course, referring to C677T and A1298C. They're consequential because they change the shape and therefore the function of the MTHFR enzyme, which is in one of the most crucial chemical pathways in our body, called the methylation pathway. So here's a quick and dirty list of health problems that are linked to MTHFR, specifically to the C677T and A1298C polymorphisms. And I apologize, it is a list. It's very difficult. But the Baden categories are midline abnormalities. That includes things like neural tube defects, spina bifida, cleft palate, many more. Cancers, including breast, lung, brain, stomach, head, neck, and kidney. Cardiac disease, so that includes thrombosis, which is an increased tendency to clot. Deep vein thrombosis, more specifically. High homocysteine levels, preeclampsia, which is high blood pressure in and around pregnancy, and vascular dementia. Fertility issues, including miscarriages or multiple pregnancy loss, low sperm count, history of children with birth defects, neurological issues like migraines, autism, ADD, and Alzheimer's dementia, and mood and psychological issues, which is a big deal for all of us lately, including anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive traits or tendencies, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. Also, reduced reactions to certain medications like SSRIs for depression and increased tendency towards addictions. Outside of that slightly scary list of diagnosable illnesses and health problems that are linked to MTHFR, there are also a number of symptoms that are highly associated but don't really warrant a diagnosis, at least not until they reach an unmanageable level. Those include all kinds of things, brain fog, irritability, obsessiveness, workaholism, Sleep issues, PMS, difficult menopause, food sensitivities, chemical sensitivities, allergies, attention issues, anger and aggression, gallbladder sludge and stones, racing heart, depression, edginess, headaches, migraines, moodiness, joint and muscle aches, itching skin, obesity or easy weight gain, carb and sugar cravings, sweating, feeling just not right, and addictive tendencies. Most people, to some degree, have one or more of those symptoms. Does having an MTHFR mutation mean that you necessarily have those issues? Nope. Just like having those issues doesn't mean you have an MTHFR mutation. So then, what does it mean? It means that if you have any of those, which honestly, most people have at least one, then managing your MTHFR and methylation cycle in a proactive way can help you to feel better, reduce your symptoms, reduce your sensitivities, and hopefully prevent MTHFR-related disease in the long term. So what is this witchcraft? 
Yep, it's called epigenetics. And it's a field that has emerged in the last couple of decades as we learn how many genes really are actionable. Epigenetics is the study of the way that diet, lifestyle, nutritional status, drug use, chemical exposure, and self-care, along with external factors, can influence the expression of your genes. All of this can feel very much like drowning in MTHFR doom. It's a bit overwhelming, especially if you're like me and can listen to the giant list of symptoms and find more than five that match up with issues that you have in your own life. The good news is that you can take control. You have the power, thanks to epigenetics, to change your state of health and the severity of these symptoms. Also, I have some other great news. There is an MTHFR superpower, and it's speed and strength. Granted, it's no eyeball laser beams, but it's a start. It's been suggested that DNA undermethylation in MTHFR folks induces muscle growth. A recent study of Russian and Polish athletes found an athletic advantage in sprint strength type activities for the A1298C polymorphs. Mutants unite! If you would like to see childish drawings of some of these concepts, please visit the website at tohealthwiththat.com. Also, you'll be able to find a downloadable PDF of conditions as well as symptoms that are associated with MTHFR. Next week, we'll dive into MTHFR testing options, what the results actually mean, and who should get tested. Subscribe so you don't miss any episodes, and pass it on to your grumpy, obsessive, workaholic friends, because maybe they're mutants too. Thanks for listening.